In today's video, I will give you 13 unbelievable ways in which gut dysbiosis will destroy your health. Roll the titles. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Before I jump into the video, just a quick reminder that I'm now offering the SIBO organic acid stool tests and consults via my website. So if you have any health or digestive issues, then consider taking these tests as they will provide a lot of very detailed information upon which you can start making informed decisions and then start getting your health back on track. And on that bombshell, to the video. Now, most people know that if you have dysbiotic gut flora, then you are more susceptible for certain types of gut problems and also wider health issues. If you have equilibrium in your gut flora, then your immune function will be better regulated. You will more efficiently produce short chain fatty acids and your neurotransmitter production will be on point. Dysbiosis simply means that you have microbial imbalance. So you have too much of the bad stuff and not enough of the good stuff. Now, just as every human and animal on the planet excrete waste, so do bacteria. And there are certain toxins and chemicals excreted by bacteria that can be extremely detrimental and damaging to our health. As I've said, bacteria will excrete many different compounds, but the group of compounds that are most problematic to humans are probably lipopolysaccharides, also known as LPS. And you may also have heard these referred to as endotoxins. And if you delve into the literature, you will quickly see all of the different impacts that lipopolysaccharides have on the body. So today I will show you some of the well-established impacts that lipopolysaccharides have on the body so that you can see the importance of maintaining a healthy gut flora. So let's get to it. So first things first, lipopolysaccharides can impact on brain function and also neurotransmitter production. So higher levels of lipopolysaccharides will reduce important neurotransmitters such as norepinephrine, serotonin, and also dopamine. So dopamine, for example, plays an important part in controlling the movement a person makes as well as their emotional responses. The right balance of dopamine is vital for both physical and mental well-being. So if this is depleted in the body, then you can start running into problems in these areas quite quickly. Also in the brain, lipopolysaccharides can impact on the hippocampus. Now the hippocampus is responsible for converting short-term memory into longer-term memory. So higher levels of lipopolysaccharides can impact on these processes as well as impede cognition. So these type of symptoms will include brain fog and also the inability to concentrate. Next up, and it stands to reason, but lipopolysaccharides can impact on and impede your gut function. So one of the common issues in the gut that lipopolysaccharides cause is intestinal permeability or leaky gut. All this simply means is that the junctions in your intestinal wall lining get pulled apart, and this then allows undigested foods and proteins into your bloodstream, where your body can respond immunologically to these. And this is often a driver or contributor to autoimmune conditions such as thyroid disease. Sticking in the gut, high levels of lipopolysaccharides have also been shown to damage the microvilli. So the microvilli are finger-like microscopic cellular membrane protrusions that increase the surface area so that you can better absorb nutrients in the gut. Higher levels of lipopolysaccharides in the gut can cause villus epithelial cell loss and villus shortening, which makes it harder to digest and assimilate nutrition. So in many, this will result in nutritional deficiencies. Next up is the thyroid gland and the pituitary gland. So the pituitary gland releases thyroid stimulating hormone to stimulate the thyroid gland to produce T3 and T4, which stimulates the metabolism of almost every tissue in the body. High levels of lipopolysaccharides can cause your pituitary gland to release lower levels of thyroid stimulating hormone, which in turn will mean that your thyroid won't produce sufficient levels of its T3 and T4 hormones, and your metabolism will be greatly impacted. On top of this, even if if your thyroid is producing sufficient levels of T3 and T4, lipopolysaccharides can block the receptor sites on the cell walls, ensuring that T3 and T4 may not be getting into the cell. So your T3 and T4 levels may be fine on blood work, but in reality your cells may be running very deficient. Next up is the kidneys, so higher levels of lipopolysaccharides have been shown to inhibit the excretion rate of certain chemicals, which can obviously cause problems because toxins you don't want accumulating in the body, you want them excreted. The next one is one that not many people realize, but high levels of lipopolysaccharides have recently been shown to increase ghrelin. Ghrelin is a hormone that is produced and released mainly by the stomach, with small amounts also being released by the small intestines, pancreas, and also the brain. Ghrelin has numerous functions. It is termed the hunger hormone because it stimulates appetite, increases food intake, and also promotes fat storage. 
This is why many people with gut dysbiosis issues put on excess weight because as their levels of ghrelin increase, as do their appetite. So you will often hear people say, no matter how much I ate, it was never enough. The cravings were ridiculous. So beyond ghrelin, increased levels of lipopolysaccharides will also impact on leptin. Leptin is a hormone released from the fat cells located in the adipose tissues, and it sends signals to the hypothalamus in the brain. This particular hormone helps regulate and alter long-term food intake and energy expenditure, not just from one meal to the next. The primary design of leptin is to help the body maintain its weight. Because it comes from fat cells, leptin amounts are directly connected to an individual's amount of body fat. So if the individual adds body fat, then leptin levels will increase, and if the individual lowers body fat percentage, then leptin levels will decrease. So in many people, as their lipopolysaccharides increase, their leptin levels decrease, and then they can start accumulating fat on their body at a faster rate. So next up is the liver. So increased lipopolysaccharides decreases the efficiency of certain detoxification pathways. It can then affect methylation and stage one and two detoxification of the liver. And all that then happens is that the toxins don't get degraded properly and then they are recirculated throughout the body instead of being excreted. So moving on from the liver, increased lipopolysaccharides can also increase cortisol levels. So cortisol is obviously one of the main stress hormones. So many people with gut dysbiosis issues will report stress levels through the roof. Next up and particularly relevant for vegans is that increased lipopolysaccharides can decrease your zinc absorption rates. Zinc is critical for many different aspects in the body such as playing an important role in immune function and also playing a significant role in DNA production. Zinc also plays an important role in the production of stomach acid. So if you have low stomach acid then it could be a sign that you have a gut infection or dysbiosis. So the lipopolysaccharides go up and then you are unable to absorb zinc correctly. Next up is inflammation. Now we know that inflammation is often the driving factor in many different disease processes in the body. So what happens with lipopolysaccharides is that as they increase in the body, it can stimulate the release of interleukin-8 and other inflammatory cytokines in various cell types, leading to acute or chronic inflammatory responses towards pathogens. So moving on, we have mitochondria, and mitochondria are the little power plants within your cells, and they take glucose or fatty acids from the food that you eat, and they turn that into the energy currency in the body called ATP or adenosine triphosphate. Lipopolysaccharides have been shown repeatedly to damage mitochondrial function within the cells, making it harder for your body to produce energy. And finally, in the body, you have a master antioxidant that is called glutathione, and that is produced from the amino acids cysteine, glutamine, and also glycine. Increased levels of lipopolysaccharides can inhibit the production of glutathione in the body, again making the body more susceptible to oxidative damage. So that's just a quick overview of some of the main ways that lipopolysaccharides can destroy health if you have gut dysbiosis. So it's really important that you fix gut dysbiosis at a root cause to ensure that you are not afflicted with many of these known issues. So that's the end of today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. And as always, remember to look after your body because it's the only place you have to live. And I'll see you next time.